with power is the newest way for runners and triathletes to be able to measure their workloads and analyze their efforts. Now, I'm gonna be honest, actually. Running to me has always been a cheap, simple, easily accessible sport. And I'm not saying that has changed, but something I really did not expect to be talking about is power in running. I mean, this is the kind of thing I expect from cycling, but not running. Well, Mark, we know you love your tech, so I think you're just gonna have to embrace it. Yeah, you're right, to be fair. And actually, analysing my power from runs does genuinely intrigue me. And after all, it has sort of taken cycling to a whole new level. So maybe it could do the same for running. And if you are actually someone that's already using power for running, then we would love to hear from you and your experience of that. So please do drop them in the comment section below. Well, I think it's time we went and took a closer look at running with power. Okay, let's start with the basics. What is power and how is it measured? Yeah, so it is basically our measurement of work output when we run. And running power meters calculate this by measuring our movement through three planes. So horizontal, vertical, and lateral. And it does this by utilizing some very fancy micro accelerometers, some super fast computer processing power, and obviously some very complicated maths to produce and calculate that all important power. Well, that power is measured in a unit called watts. The higher the watts, the more power you're generating. And the more power that you're generating at a lower heart rate, basically means the more efficient you are. And we all know that efficiency is key. Now, power's actually been a method that's been used in cycling for decades now. It's allowed the sport to improve, the performance to really advance. And now the devices are small enough that they can actually be transferred to running. So the question is, are we gonna see the same benefits in running that we've seen in cycling thanks to power? Well, let's take a closer look at these power meet devices for running. And unlike cycling, there aren't all that many devices out there just yet, but we do have a couple of good examples here with us today. So one of which is the Stride foot pod. So this attaches to the laces on our shoe and it uses some very small motion sensing accelerometers to calculate the power from our foot. Well, the other option is this, the Polar Vantage V. It's actually the very first running watch to record running power purely through the wrist. And it does so using GPS speed sensors and then also senses your elevation using the barometric sensors that are built into the watch. On the plus side, you then obviously don't need to have any extra sensors to run with, but on the downside, it does mean that it can't actually track your power when you're running indoors. Yeah, but essentially, they both do the same thing, read power. And currently, today, we're fairly limited in our running metrics to maybe our pace, our heart rate, or maybe our feel in maybe using rate of perceived exertion. Pace, it's great, but it doesn't necessarily tell us how hard we're actually working. Our heart rate, also great, but it doesn't necessarily work in real time, so it can take a little bit of time for it to catch up. And also, heart rate can be affected by external factors, maybe tiredness, illness, stress, or even if you've had a big caffeine hit from a coffee yeah. just before, um, which is fantastic in some cases, but it doesn't always mean that it's a reliable source of how hard we're working. And then obviously, rate of perceived exertion is, you could say, rather rudimentary and potentially a little bit unreliable. Yeah, well, this is where power fills that gap because not only is it instant, it just tells you how hard you're working. So enough about that, Mark. I think it's time we went out to see how power actually can help us. Every day pretend you my baby, I see more real out there lately, it's crazy. Yeah, we could be the same as we claim in this kingdom ish and keep it tank, come on. Now a power meter will tell you how much power you're putting out per foot stride and propulsion and therefore how economical you are whilst you're running. Now this could be really interesting because you start to play around with your cadence, your stride length, your technique, your form, your speed and so on and you'll be able to see your power throughout all of this and how it differs for each of these changes and ultimately we're looking to put out more power for less effort and therefore more economical running. Another really valuable area for power meters in running is the ability to be able to measure the exact intensity of that workout. Now, many of us have already used power in cycling to be able to measure our intervals, for example. Well, you can do exactly the same when it comes to running. And this means that you can hit the exact intensity that you need to for that set time, therefore getting more out of your workout and also preventing overtraining. 
Well, that kind of follows us nicely on to discuss pacing, and I'm sure we're all guilty of at some points pushing that little bit too hard on hills or into a block headwind during a run workout or during an event. Now, obviously, heart rate can be quite good here in measuring that effort level, but it can take some time for it to catch up. Whereas with power, we literally get instant real-time feedback. So by monitoring our power, we can maintain a good constant effort level and make sure that we pace that effort well and make sure we don't blow up. Equally, we can also make sure that we use all that energy and therefore don't have too much left in the tank at the end. Now, the wonderful thing about all of this is the data. Now, I must admit, I don't necessarily analyze my training to the nth degree, but I have a coach who certainly does find this interesting. So love it or hate it, this extra data will be useful, especially if you have a coach like myself, as it can help them to analyze your training and then adapt your program accordingly. Well, this is all very interesting, but it is important to note that power in running isn't here to replace and override those previous metrics that we're using, like heart rate or pace. Yeah, in actual fact, power can be complemented by those metrics. Say, for example, you're doing the same session two weeks apart and you're measuring your power. Your power stays the same, but your heart rate is lower in the second time. Well, that means that you're becoming more efficient. And the same goes for if you're measuring your power and your pace and you're at the same power, but you're running faster, then you're also more efficient. Well, I've actually been using power in running for a little bit of time now. I've been using numerous different devices and yeah, it, it's been a bit of a learning curve. I'm learning which numbers or what numbers are normal for me. And in cycling, I know my FTP and my zones from that. Previously in running, I knew my heart rate, my pace, and again, my zones from that. So now I'm starting to learn my power and the zones from that. And actually, a lot of the power meters and their apps will generate these zones for you. But if you are entering a race and you want to know the power for that for a certain time, then there are a lot of online calculators for that. Yeah, and I know, Mark, you just touched on the fact you've been using it for a while. I know you've been sort of looking at it in a bit more depth than I have. Do you think that this could change running? That is a very good question. And honestly, I just feel like it's a little bit too soon to say. Uh, power meters in running are still very much in their infancy. I still feel like a lot of these potential advantages just need time to really prove themselves. Uh, one thing that I can think of is that running, or well, the propulsion in running, doesn't solely come from the feet. If you think about it, you use your arms, you use that tilt in your body with your center of mass, there's also that elastic energy in your tendons and other tissues. And whilst these devices say that they have managed to calculate all of this, I struggle to believe that it's 100% accurate. But that said, having used these different devices, they've been really quite accurate and very similar between the different devices. So if they can be consistent in those numbers they churn out, then yeah, this could be a really valuable measurement and tool. Yeah, I mean, I find the whole thing really interesting and I think the, you know, the more science we can get from it, but as technology advances, I think we will start to see more power getting used more often in running. Yeah, and I, like I say, I found it very valuable in my own pacing but actually also it's just been fun. I found it really motivating heading out for runs. And we would love to hear from you guys as to what you think about power in running. So please do get involved and drop them in the comment section below. Yeah, and if you've enjoyed this video and you've been not too bombarded by all the science and the tech that we've got excited about, hit the thumb up like button and hit the globe to subscribe to make sure you get all of our videos here at GTN. And if you want to see a video on how to run with heart rate or how to work out your running zones, that's just here. And if you'd like to see our Polar Advantage of the watch unboxing and see how it all works and how you can record power with it, then you can see that by clicking just down here.